So what we have on this page is a case study, and we're going to start uh, the webinar with a case study to give you a sense of um, the value uh, of the decision model in a real live project environment. This project that, the, that this case study was taken from uh, is a situation where an organization had invested several years in creating a business process model and capturing related business rules. Um, this was an insurance uh, enterprise that were uh, building a new uh, a method of underwriting or adding a new method of underwriting to an existing um, underwriting uh, suite. And the, um, the before chart shows the process that they had uh, arrived at after several years of uh, struggle. And you see the little red annotations in each of the tasks. These are the business rules that pointed to the very large catalog of business rules, several hundred of them, many hundred of them actually. Um, and uh, despite having fairly skilled project members, the, the rules contain overlaps, redundancies, inaccuracies. So actually buried in the graphics of the, uh, of the uh, process model itself. In other words, the process model actually had business logic built into it. And that's common we see in many uh, process models that we encounter in, in the world today. What you see on the right is the after model, which is much simpler. Now, it, it is also in a different notation. It happens to be in BPMN notation, but the notation is not the difference. The real difference is that we've not only removed the business rules from the process model on the left, uh, we've also removed the, 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 the logic, the business logic, that were embedded in the actual processes themselves. And, and what we did is we cast that business logic and the business rules as normalized decision models. And doing this, this uh, simpler process model, what we arrived at was fewer deliverables, a significant reduction in the total number of process models that were in this project uh, due to reuse, and a very significant saving in time and money. The the process model on the left represented their first line of business. The process model on the right turned out to in, uh, replace not only uh, their first line of business process model, but was able to be reused in multiple lines of business. So doing the simpler uh, process model uh, enabled them to save a significant amount of time and effort uh, in, in their process modeling, and we were able to move forward and augment that process model with decision models. And I'm going to show you that on the next page. So here you see the process model connection. Uh, the process model that we had as an example on the earlier page, you see its connection to a decision model. Each of those blue dots that you see, each of those icons in the tasks um, represent tasks that are decision tasks. We've removed the business rules from the process model. We've cast them into a decision model. And the decision model is that central, the central image, the central uh, shape you see uh, on the, on the, uh, on the slide. And we're going to explain uh, to you a lot about this uh, decision model uh, as we move on. The decision model is connected to a set of rule families, and that's to say the rules are maintained uh, in, in the spreadsheets on the right-hand side. So this representation of the business rules behind each of those task boxes, organized in third normal form, uh, and, and this means that there's only one way to represent those business rules in this new kind of model. It turns out to be a significant differentiator in advancing the practice of business process modeling, management, and business rule management. The rules on the right-hand side can be, uh, can be viewed ind individually, and, and these detailed representations look something like decision tables, but they follow normalization principles, and that gives them rigor, predictability, and reusability. So the decision model is a new model whose existence simplifies and complements other kinds of models that you're really familiar with. And we're going to show that on the next page. 
So the decision model connects with use cases and connects with process models, uh, as you see on this page. And we, we will delve into that in greater detail as we move in through the uh, webinar. This particular business process model we represented using BPMN, but we could have used UML, IDEF, or any other notation. An entire decision model is anchored to each of these related models wherever it's needed and cross-referenced to data and object models as well. This means that business rules and logic are no longer buried in other kinds of models. The important point is that business rules now have their own kind of model, which is not the same as other models. They have their own existence and that can be managed and shared as an individual and uncluttered asset. So now I'm going to turn over to Barbara, who will introduce you to more decision model concepts. Thank you, Larry. Um, just for, the, um, for historical purposes, we have actually been practicing this decision model with our clients for approximately two years, maybe a little bit more. So when we talk about it as a theoretical model, we've actually used it, and we do have real case studies, and our book will have endorsements by some of those um, organizations in terms of the benefits that they got out of it. Um, on this page, um, this gives you the idea that the decision model is all about the separation of concerns. And, and the reason um, Ken Orr many years ago talked about systems being a big ball of mud and wanting to separate different areas of concerns was for the purpose of simplicity and the ability to manage each of these concerns independent of each other. Um, the separation of some of the concerns like data is well understood today, we, but separating business rules or business logic from the big wall of mud is not well understood today, and it's not practiced in a standard way. People do it differently. As, as you saw in that process model, there were some red notations that were business rules. There was a catalog of business rules, maybe in the Excel or maybe in a database. Um, maybe they're in some other kind of tool, but there's no standard representation that everybody could use. And, and without a standard representation, it's really difficult to unbundle that concept of business rules and business logic from all the other components. Um, what's ironic about that is that the business logic, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means, or the business rules, are really the very heart of automated systems and even of manual processes. It's really where the intelligence and decision making of humans comes into play. And um, we don't really capture that in a, in a very um, standard way. So the question is, if there's no universal or standard method for separating them out from other concerns, you know, how, how can we move forward with this? So the idea came to us that there's no model for business rules like the relational model had turned out to be for data. If you remember how the world of data was before we had the relational model and all of its rigor and then relational database management systems, everybody did the data management their own way. And we had a lot of, a lot of messy data out there. So what I'd like to do is start by understanding the value of a rigorous model. And in particular, let's look back at the relational model and understand how that really changed the way we look at data today. Some of us lived through it and, and some of us may not have. Uh, the relational model by Dr. Kahn, was more than just a simple mechanism for organizing data. It was different from previous approaches because it provided a stable scientific foundation to the database field. It, it was based on set theory, and it was based on predicate calculus. Um, what that meant was that the restructure and integrity of the relational model was based only on the inherent properties of data itself and not by how it was used or processed. The data needed to be pulled away from process and pulled away from other concerns and to just model pure data in its own sense. Um, and so not only did the relational model prescribe a structure, which we all know as relational tables, it had to also embody principles for rigor so that we got those tables correctly. And